Hi everybody, welcome back. Today we are going to be looking at one aspect of the fundamentals of accounting where we try to understand how to analyze transactions in terms of inflows and outflows. And in accounting, anything that will result in an increase or an inflow will be a positive and anything that will result in an outflow or a decrease will be a negative. And so the way to do that is we look at a transactions table. We're going to look at a set of business transactions that have occurred in any business. And then we will work with certain accounts and see which account increases and which account decreases. The basic principles that we're keeping in mind are the fact that we're doing accrual based double entry accounting here. Um, and the resources that we're using are Financial and Managerial Accounting by Kimmel, Weygent and Kieso. This is a specific reference to Chapter 1. And uh, we will be doing from their problems, Problem 1-1b. Don't forget to like and subscribe and drop into the comments below if there's any additional resources that you need help with. And uh, that way you can also stay posted and up to date with our accounting and finance resource updates. And so the question we're looking at is problem 1-1b. And this basically says that on April 1st, Holly Dahl established Holiday Travel Agency. The following transactions were completed during the month. We're going to go through each of these transactions one by one in a moment here. But uh, as you can see over here, we've got specific instructions. And the instructions are to prepare a tabular analysis of the transactions using the following column headings. And you'll see these are all of the column headings that we have created in this Excel file here. And we create separate columns each for the revenue, expense, and the dividends, which will all come together to calculate our retained earnings. Um, our margin explanations will es essentially be to identify what sort of an expense we have incurred. And once we're done with identifying the journal, the sorry, the business transactions and their impact on the different accounts, then we will create our our total columns and be able to calculate the net income from those columns. So let's go ahead and get started. So if we look at transaction number one, you'll see I've laid this out according to serial number already. And so in transaction number one, it says stockholders invested $10,000 cash in the business in exchange for common stock. This basically means that you have an influx of $10,000 in cash and an influx of $10,000 in common stock. That's our first transaction. Then for our second transaction, we paid $400 cash for April office rent. So that means you've had an outflow of $400 from cash. We'll do negative 400 there. And against that, we've also identified an expense. This is our rent expense. And remember, we're just noting this for our own knowledge. Okay, these are the notes for our retained earnings. Then we, uh, number three, we purchased office equipment for $2,500 cash. Now, because we purchased it for cash, it represents an outflow from our cash account that's negative $2,500. But it also represents an increase in our equipment. So that's a positive $2,500 there. Then we incurred uh, $300 of advertising costs in the Chicago Tribune on account. Now, the key there is an expense has already happened, okay? We had an advertising expense, so negative 300 there, and we'll even add into our notes that this is an advertising expense. But because it is on account, it's basically the increase of a liability, and the liability is represented by accounts payable because this is money that we will owe in the future to that particular agency, specifically to Chicago Tribune. So we have an increase in our accounts payable liability of $300. So you'll see the negative and the positive balancing there. Number five says we paid $600 cash for office supplies. This represents an outflow from cash, so negative 600, but an inflow on your supplies. So there we go. Number six earned $8,500 for services provided. Now this is extremely important because we've provided those services, so that's $8,500 for services provided, but there's a breakdown there. 2,000 cash is received from customers. That represents an inflow of 2,000 in cash. And the balance, 6,500, is billed to customers. So that means we expect to receive this in the future, and that will go into our accounts receivable. 
Number seven says declared and paid a $200 cash dividend because it is a dividend. It'll be a negative 200 on our dividend count. And because we've paid it, so it's a negative 200 under cash. Number eight, page Chicago Tribune, the amount due in transaction number four. So in transaction number four, we owed Chicago Tribune $300. That liability is going to decrease. Our accounts payable is going to decrease by $300. And because we've paid it, our cash is also going to decrease by $300. Number nine says we paid employees' salaries by of $2,200. Because we paid this amount, it represents a cash outflow of $2,200 and an expense of $2,200. And we'll note over here that this is a salaries and wages expense. And then number 10 says we received $5,700 in cash from customers built previously in transaction number six. In transaction number six, we had 6,500 outstanding from our customers. And out of those customers, $5,700 worth of our customers paid up. So that means our accounts receivable is going to decrease by 5,700 and our cash is going to increase by 5,700 because that's the money that we received. Now what we want to do once we've entered all of these transactions and we want to calculate the sum. I'm going to, now we've, we're done with the question here essentially. What we, we are trying to do is we've done the tabular analysis for part A and now for part B we are looking to create a retained earnings column and calculate our net income. We're going to cross check the ending cash and the net income over here. So let's go ahead and increase the size on this so that we can work more comfortably. Now basically we want to calculate the total for all of our accounts and so we'll do the total over here from all of our transactions. And remember this is where the positives and the negatives are extremely important. So we're just going to go ahead and drag that right across and we're going to calculate all of our totals. So these are the totals totals. And according to our accounting equation, we also know that assets will be equal to liabilities plus equity. So if we take the sum of all of our assets and then we take the sum of all of our liabilities and our equity, essentially we should be getting the same number. And you can see that that checks out. So all of your entries have been done correctly over here. And the last point in contention over here is to calculate net income. And so net income is calculated as revenue minus expenses, right? And so if we look at our tabular analysis over here, we have our total revenue and we have our um, expenses. Okay, and now the reason that I did a plus sign in the Excel is because the expenses already have a negative, so a positive and negative will result in a negative. So we've got a net income of 5,600 and we've got a cash balance of 11,500. And if we look back at our question, we've got a cash balance of 11,500 as a cross-checking amount and a net income of 5,600. So you can be absolutely certain that the question is done correctly. Once again, don't forget to like and subscribe so you can stay up to date. Comment if you need any additional help and come back for more questions. Thank you.